indexes help perform the following functions execute queries and find documents that match the query criteria without a collection scan limit the number of documents a query examines store field value in the order of the value support equality matches which are again a range based query so again we need to see over here that mongodb indexes are similar to the indexes which we use in any other database so these are different types of indexes which we see and the different types of indexes we'll see in mongodbr so by default the underscore id we have that is by default indexed so each mongodb collection contains an index on the default underscore id field so we can have a single field index it means a single key on which we want to put an index so for single field index and sort operations mongodb can traverse the indexes either in the ascending or the descending order so that's again why the one and the minus one came into picture so it can do in both if we are talking of a single field index then we come across compound index so mongodb supports user defined indexes such as compound indexes for multiple fields so now if i want to put a compound index on the name and the age together so what is the way out so the way out is again putting a compound index on both the name and the key so when we are putting a compound index on the name and the age i have an option that i can make the name index sort in an ascending order and make the age index sort in a descending manner then we have a multi key index if we have uh, more than that so this is basically used for indexing array data so suppose we have a array called hobbies and hobbies again have three things called say tt badminton and say volleyball and what we see inside that is internally what mongo does mongo will create an index for every value inside that array so it will create a, a different index for hobbies.cricket hobbies.tt hobbies.badminton so that's a multi key index then we are talking about a geospatial index so again uh, we will talk about the geospatial queries as well going down the lane and then we have something called uh, text indexes so when we uh, say geospatial indexes that means that we will be able to assign a latitude and a longitude to a particular document so if we talk about uh, say again uh, let's talk about something called there is a collection called uh for dealership so again uh, ford dealership ford ford is a brand of a car and again if we are looking for servicing our ford you know car in some service station suppose there is a collection which has all the details about all the ford dealership centers there are in bangalore let's take the example of bangalore so now along with every document containing information about every single authorized ford dealer it will also contain a latitude and a longitude which will tell the location from which that particular document is associated with so after that so again in that if we want to press a, if we want to put an index on some uh, index on some particular key we will call that a geospatial index so index is used in geospatial queries are called geospatial indexes so we can use 2d indexes and 2d sphere indexes uh, so we'll talk about both of them when we see down the them in detail then we have something called text indexes so it searches data string in a collection then we have something called hashed indexes so mongodb supports hash based indexes and provides hashed indexes so moving to the next slide we have a single field index so now we'll see every type of index in detail what it has to offer to us so now single field index so mongodb supports indexes on any document field in a collection by default the underscore id field in all collections have indexes so that's what i already told you moreover applications and users add indexes for triggering queries and performing operations so mongodb supports both single field as well as multi field indexes based on the operations the index type performs so here we are what we are doing is 
there is an items collection and what we are specifically doing we are creating an index on the item key in the items collection so this is another way how to create an index so we can also do db dot items dot ensure index so both of them will result in an index creation in our collection so either db dot collection dot create index or db dot items dot create index both of them will allow us to create a index moving on to the next slide so single field index if we want to have on an embedded document how we can do it so embedded document is something which we talked about yesterday so we can index top level fields within document similarly you can create indexes within embedded document fields so if you can see we have a document where what we have is we have a guy whose id is 3 whose item is book and available is true and sold quantity is some number the category is no sql and the details is another document internally with isbn as publisher and the isbn is 1234 and the publisher is xyz company so again in this what we have done is we have just created an index inside a embedded document so uh, we had a details document embedded inside a normal document so we were able to create an index specifically on that using a dot operator the command shows db dot items dot create index details dot isbn colon 1 now what this shows so mongodb supports compound indexes to query multiple fields a compound index contains multiple single field indexes separated by a comma the command shown on the screen clearly suggests that it's an example of a compound index on two fields the diagram depicts a compound index for the fields user id and score the documents are first organized by user id and within each user id scores are organized in the descending order the sort order of fields in a compound index is very crucial the documents are first sorted by an item field value and then within each item field value they are further so sorted by the stock field values so for a compound index it is imperative to know that mongodb limits the fields of a compound index to a maximum of 31 so we can't have more than 31 keys take part in a compound index so now we talk of index prefixes so index prefixes are created by taking different combination of fields and typically they start from the first field for example consider the compound index given on the screen it has item in the ascending order and available in the ascending order as the index prefixes so mongodb uses a compound index even if the find queries are for index prefixes fields it uses indexes for querying the item field the available field and the sold quantity field so very imperative to note over here the mongodb cannot efficiently support the query on the item and sold quantity fields by using index prefixes as it would be like using separate indexes for these specific fields the item field is a part of the compound index and the index prefixes hence the item item the item field should be used in the find query of the index exclusively now if we come to the sort order which we talked about you know some time back the one and the minus one again an important thing in mongodb you can use the sort operations to manage the sort order so you can retrieve documents based on the sort order in an index if you are unable to obtain the document sorted from an index the results will actually get sorted in the memory sort operations executed using an index show better performance than those executed without using an index so again as i told you uh, the scanning of documents how much of the get scanned so if we have an index definitely there is a performance improvement over that in addition sort operations performed without an index gets terminated after exhausting 32 megabytes of memory so typically indexes store field references in the ascending or the descending sort order so for single field indexes mongodb can traverse the index in either direction 
that is why they are sending or they are sending hence the sort order doesn't actually become important but when we talk of the compound indexes the sort order becomes important because as it helps to determine if the index can support a sort operation or not now the next thing which we have over here we need to ensure that we don't end up making too many indexes so that's why the heading you can see in red ensure the indexes fit in the ram so all of you i don't i'm not i'm not a very sure again you know whether you guys are aware of this or not but mongodb is a in memory database and i say it's a in memory database what i want to say it again brings the data it process first of all into the ram and then processes that and thus we get faster efficiency so if there is a chance there is a data set not in the ram because again all of our data cannot reside in the ram what will actually happen is it will you know incur a page fault in operating system we would have read something called page in and page out so if there is a page which is required by mongodb to be processed right now and if that page is right now not in the uh, ram what the mongo will do it will do a page in from the hard disk to the memory and but that will again cause uh, a separate overhead to get that you know thing done so too much of page fault is something which is not recommended so that is the reason we see over here that we need to be very sure that all of our indexes fit in ram and we don't end up making too many indexes so to process query faster ensure that the indexes fit in your system ram this will help the system avoid reading the indexes from the hard disk that's again exactly what i told you to confirm the index size use the query given on the screen this returns the data in the bytes to ensure this index fits your ram you must have more than the required ram available in addition you must have ram available for the rest of the working set as well so for multiple collections check the size of all the indexes across all the collections the indexes and the working sets both must fit in the ram simultaneously to get a better query So again, if the index field contains an array internally, so it's again Mongo which decides whether it'll create a multi-key index on that or not. So what we have over here is multi-key indexes. So when indexing a field containing an array value, as we know, again multi-key indexes. I told you the example of hobbies. It has TT, badminton, and say volleyball. So MongoDB will do it create separate index entries. for each array component so mongodb lets you construct multi key indexes for arrays holding scalar values such as strings numbers and nested documents so to create a multi key index use the method given below so again that's exactly what you know uh, we were using even earlier so db dot collection dot create index or ensure index both of them will work so again we need to know that you know, if the index field contains an array mongodb automatically decides whether it really needs to have a multi key index being created or not so this is something which the framework decides implicitly so compound multi key indexes so in compound multi key indexes each index document can have maximum one index field with an array value with more than one field contain an array value compound multi key indexes cannot be created so given below is an example of the document structure so what we say is the id is 1 and the product id we can see it is an array which is having the value 1 comma 2 similar way retail id another array having the value 100 and 200 and then we have a category which is having a normal string so a shard key index and a hashed index cannot be a multi key index so we'll see down the line you know what is a shard key we have not come across uh, sharding so we will understand that once we i guess i guess this is something which i told you in the second class or i guess the first class that we shard our data across multiple clusters using a shard key the way we had block size in hadoop which ensures that the data file gets divided into blocks and then it gets scattered across the cluster similar way shard key is the thing over here which ensures that what happens it shards our data accordingly so the shard key suppose we have an employee collection the perfect shard key will be employee id so i can make the first 20 
uh, records reside in the first cluster, the next one be somewhere else, and the next one be somewhere else. So a short key index and a hash index cannot actually be a multi-key index. Now we talk of something called hash indexes. So the hashing function does the following. What it's going to do is it's going to combine all the embedded documents. So what the hashing function will do, the hashing function combines all the embedded documents and computes hashes for all the field values. However, again, it does not support multi-key indexes. Hashed indexes support sharding. So when we are talking about sharding, so hash-based partitioning is something which is very important and which again is a very uh, relevant thing which the industry does right now. So these indexes use a hashed shard key to shard a collection. This ensures an even distribution of data. So having a hash shard key, what it helps us is, it helps us ensure an even distribution of data. MongoDB uses hashed indexes to support equality queries. However, range queries are something which is not supported. So let me you know elaborate this a bit. Let me elaborate this a bit. So when we say it supports sharding, so there are two things which are you know said over here. One is hashed shard key, that is hash-based partitioning, and then we are talking about range queries.